So this is how AX and data looks in QGIS. You can uh, symbolize it, you can apply labels, you can visualize the attribute tables that you have, you can export it if you want, and you can do some processing with it, especially on analysis load buffers. If you want to learn how to do it, then stick around until the end. Hi everyone, my name is Antonio Locandro and in this channel we do videos about our nautical information management and geographical information systems in general like QGIS. In this video, I'll be showing you how to read AIXM obstacle data using open source software QGIS. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we need is some data. So we're going to be going to the Enidia website and I'll go into put all the links in the show notes. And if we go there, we're going to be getting this cookie setting. So we click accept and we have the AIP data here. And you know, it's not really in the Euro control format, but it has the PDF. But if we go here to the right, we have something called digital data. That sounds interesting. Oh, it says AIX and five data. Okay, so let's get some data. So once we switch to digital data, we see that we can get uh, some data sets from this website and we got the area one obstacles we got uh, for each aerodrome and we got the aerodromes here uh, if we scroll further down and we can check that we have two options here we have AIXM and XML and this part of XML is the metadata so in the case of Spain they're not putting the metadata within the AIXM5 file itself but as a separate entity Okay, so let's try it now and check for the metadata for area one. So if I click here on the metadata, um, it's just an XML file. So it doesn't have any type of formatting. So it's going to be a little bit complex for us to read if we don't know a little bit about the tags. But if we go here, we had like this string, which is uh, probably how they're going to name it. You know, it says going to be reading the L, E, M, D, T, A, the year, and so forth. Then we go back, let's see, it's A, Spain. So everything that is in black is something that we are going to be interested in reading. We got the telephone address. Let's check if we got, got something more interesting than this. It, well, you see EPSG 4326, so that's WGS 84. Um, some air navigation obstacles, the date is 28th of June, 2021, and so forth. But what I was looking here is, AXM 5.1, I wanted to know how many features this data has because, you know, if I'm downloading this data set, I read it, I want to know how many features does this data set has. And from the metadata, I don't know. So we just need to trust that anything that uh, we have here is going to be correct, which I think is a pity it should be included in the metadata itself. Now here it says that optical data for area one was obtained from AESA or through some third party. This automatically imported into a GIS database and from there exported into XML format for distribution. So from this, it seems that it goes into some sort of GIS and then it's post processed to give us an AIX and Phi that one compliant file and what are the limitations and they're using some software here for the metadata and let's check for Barcelona because that's the other file I want to do today and it's the same information so I don't get a list of features which I want to know you know do I have 400 points 30 lines and two polygons or it's just points or whatever and this is very important because at some point, you're going to be using some viewer or editor to check the data and how do you know everything is complete? Uh, at this point, I really don't know, but now let's download the data itself. So if I click on AIXM, by default, I'm just going to be opening it up in the browser. This is not really very useful. Um, to download, you actually want to do right click and save link as, and then you're going to be saving into a folder, which I already have here a Spain folder. I'm going to be using to save. Okay, so it's about 14.6 megabytes. So depending on your connection, it's going to be faster or slower and so forth. And I'll download also the one for Barcelona. So the same thing, save link as and save. And that should be a lot faster because it has less data. Okay, so now that we have downloaded the data, what we're going to do is we're going to be switching to QGIS. Now here in QGIS, we're just going to 
read the data because I don't want to use another sort of viewer. And if you read it here in QGIS or QGIS, or you want to pronounce it, then you can export it to view it in RGIS because as much as I know right now, it's not possible direct read. I might be wrong because I haven't used RGIS in the last um, year or so. So now that we have downloaded our data, we're just going to go to my browser here in QGIS. I'm going to go to where I have my Spain data and here I got four files, but it's actually just how QGIS interprets it uh, based on GDAL, which is the engine. And I'm just going to add these ones that have like the polygon patch here, just drag and drop. And the minute you do the drag and drop, then, you know, it's automatically read by QGIS. So I have my data here. So I'm just going to turn off for Barcelona. And here is my one for en route. So I'm just going to add a face maps here so i got spain so it's actually looking good to my world map and if i turn this one off and i can check now where the one at barcelona is right about here so now that i have that well you can really add a symbology that you want so i have some symbols here i'm just going to click my optical data click this one and for this one right here so i already have styled in what looks a lot like um i kill or an article features you see i have this sort of um map and then i can check my optical data and in QGIS, you can know how many entities were read or not so if i open the attribute table here i have something that says you got 7946 features and of those you use 7946 so there's nothing left out and everything here is a type point, which is basically easily interpreted by QGIS. So here I have my table and I have all of this information. This is the same information from that uh, weird XML that was kind of difficult to deal with. And I can just, you know, order it by type or I can just order it by vertical extent. In this case, it also has parts. And I have this funky looking feel here. So I can switch from a row view to just checking one individual attribute. So I have this funky looking feel here that maybe I just want to alter it so it looks a little bit better on my screen. So I'm going to switch here to a notepad and I'm checking the root file. So when you open it in QGIS, you're going to be checking that it adds some GFS files. So this is what QGIS uses to read the file and to understand it. So it has some settings here. So I'm just going to drag the root one here a notepad and I'm going to change my encoding to XML so it looks nice it has all of this extra information so it detects that it's a GML feature what's the feature count 7946 so this is what I wanted to check for the metadata from Spain how many obstacles are you giving me so you can see that you have some properties here defined so for each one it will take what's the element path from the XML it's going to get the last part of the node which is begin position as the name like a short uh, part but in some cases you know begin position is twice because of the model so what i'm going to do here is just um just for display i'm going to delete this part here feature lifetime that's too long and i think there's another one that is this one type so i'm just going to delete vertical structure type and take uh, this part here and save it so this is just for the display in QGIS and uh, let's return to QGIS here So notice we have here. But if we do a refresh, it's going to reread the file and now I have something more manageable like this. And so now I know, OK, this has this begin position 2018 month 12 and day six. But the feature lifetime, it actually started on the 11th. This is how you can deal with this information. I can know, for example, liked it. I'm missing here. The horizontal extent so i'm just um i'm just having the vertical extent so how do i do some quality checks let's say so let's start by turning this off i'm just going to add some google satellite imagery which i think is like the most common thing people will do got some obstacle data i'll add google earth and check something so i'll just zoom well to barcelona since we're going to be looking at it later there and i have some data here so i can zoom in and i can check so I got some obstacles here and this is how it looks. I'm just going to add some properties like, okay, so one opacity slider, you know, because it's a little bit too 
posh in my eyes. Google images are not really for a photo. So they're not to be used for these use cases. So what can I do? It will be better if I have some auto photo images. So that's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to add some um, imagery I have from Spain. So they have like a portal, a WMS portal where you can download some data from Spain. I'm going to connect to it. And I'm just going to add this one that says Porto image coverage. Click add. And once I click close, now I have my data. So I have added these imagery from Spain and you can check that it's a little bit different. If I turn off this one from the QGIS, you can notice here the building, how it touch looks differently. And what you can check here is you've got some vertices here at the bottom because that's where it's relevant here it's not here at the top but at the bottom this is where the building actually goes to the end and i can get some data from this okay so i'm just going to change the projection because wgs84 is not really a good projection to watch the data local i'm going to use something more for spain and for spain i'm going to be using 2062 um, covers the whole area of Spain, so probably will be okay. It'll be better than WGS84 at least. So we got some of this data. Okay, so I'm going to be turning off the Google satellite, and this is how it looks the ortho image from Spain. So we have done a lot right now, but still, you can do some things. Okay, so we already read the data, and I'm just going to go to Barcelona and go to the airport. And I'll just zoom here. There's a lot of optical data there. And I'll have all of this data from the airport itself. AX and data, having QGIS, QGIS, I can export it to something else like KML if I want to. I just need to right click here and export to whatever feature I like. But I want to get some additional information. So let's say I'm zooming here and something, some feature is kind of relevant. And this is why um publishing points and this is what we're used to in aviation is probably not the best way to handle things points is a very finite element and we have some area around our features that we really need to take into account and i have some data and you can see here that this is the point it looks red but there's an area here so i want to know what this is so i can use my identify tool Make sure I have the layer that I want to check and I want to check what this is. And this is a sign. But notice that this is just the point here. There's no area. So what I want to do is I'm going to change the styling for this. And there's a neat thing in QGIS. So I'm just going to close it here. And notice that you can have all of this information from the table, but just click here. So I get all of this data. So I'm just going to close this. I have this neat feature that I can do in this. I can add like you know in the area around so i'm added two meter radius so this would be two meters so if i use my measuring tool and i use cartesian and i measure from these to here it's about two meters so i can switch okay from two meters i can say well i want it to one meter or if i had the field with the um horizontal accuracy i can use that field and check but notice that this is the point you got some area around it. So probably this is where we need to take into account if you're a procedure designer and so forth, that the point obstacle data is just point, but it has some possible area around it. So what else can we do here? Okay, if I want to do something else, uh, GML is a highly inefficient format for doing analysis. So what I'm going to do is use some processing and I'm going to reproject a layer just so I can use the QGIS. So I'm going to use the vertical structure run. I'm going to create a temporary file. So this one, if I zoom to layer, now this is the Lima Echo Bravo Lima part. Turn this off. And I'm going to do the reproject now for the and root structures. So I can do run, take close. So this one is the end root. So now what I can do and check is, okay, I want to check how many features from the airdrome are duplicate or overlapping the end route. So to do that, I can go to vector research tools, select by location, and I want to 
select a feature from my enroute part that intersects my air drum and create a new selection. So I click run and that's fast because I'm not using GML. And now I have several features that are selected and I can use this part here that says open attribute table. But in this case, I just want to open the attribute table with the selected features. And I have this. So if I go back to my row view, I got 20 features that are in both. So they're both in the root structure and in the Lima Echo Bravo Lima file. At least they're identical positions. Now the issue is, are they the same exact features? Then we need to check what's inside, but that will be topic for another thing. So what else can we do? Okay, so I have my root um, obstacle. So let's say I want to do like a, a buffer around it. So I'm just going to buffer and I have this script because it's in WGS84. It's a little bit different. So there's a, a ways you can do it with um, scripting. So in this case, equidistance buffer, it tells you it's an algorithm that creates a buffer around our features, which are in WGS84 by doing some nice um, geometry projection using asymuthal equidistant geometry. So basically it's stereo geodetic calculation. So I want to create a buffer of 1.5 meters around all of my points and store that. So now what it's doing is for every point that is in my file is creating a 1.5 meter buffer. Okay, so buffers are done. I can zoom in. And I'll just put this one below, something like that. And I can measure from here to here. That's 1.5. Perfect. So, okay, so got some data. And what else can we do? We can label these data, of course. So I'm just going to close the process in here, go to my labels. I want a single label. So I got my names, but probably I'm more interested in my elevation and just add my unit of measurement so elevation plus if i go to my fields here i can check my unit of measurement like this i probably wanted to put in the same color red and add some buffer and i have now pretty much of idea 116.23 meters okay so you see, this is like the edge here, here, here. So those are the points at the bottom. So most likely if I select this part here, this should be of the same building. I got my features here, open just my selected feature. And like I said, most likely the same building. You can see it's Lima Echo Bravo Lima dash OBS dash 1942 dash 001 two, three, four, five. The, those are the, probably one of those. It's just like the hole here. So you could draw the perimeter, but in this case, they just provide the points. So to end this video, I'm just going to show you something very neat. So your control provides what's an optical data converter. You can download from website and um, look something like this. So it has some optical data and converter and what it does, it changes um, your AXM file to an Excel spreadsheet. So maybe you don't want to see it in QGIS, but you want to see it in an Excel spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is wherever we downloaded this, which you can download from your control website, then I'm going to open a Windows terminal. What I'm going to do is I want to tell it OBS obstacle, I suppose, data converter, change this file, which is the Lima Echo Bravo Lima XML to Excel. What it does, it changes this XML to an Excel file in the same structure uh, folder that you have. So it has detected that it's an AXN version 5.1. And now it has finished creating the file. So if I go here, you can check I have a now and Excel file. So if I double click on this, and I open it. There's no metadata because remember that the file has the metadata from Spain, a different one. But if it if it's included in the same file, probably it's going to be 
pots here. But if I go to vertical structure now, this is very interesting. I have my data from the AI exam in a simple Excel spreadsheet that probably is easier for me to check. So I can check what's the obstacle type. So let's say I'm going to add some filters. Uh, I can check the types, uh, it's antenna, building, crane, um, trees, etc. If it's lighted or not. Um, there are some lighted. Okay, so I'm just going to filter those. Buildings, what's the horizontal extent? You can see it's empty. So this one, I think should be included because then you can create the buffers automatically in the units of measurement. The parts, um, what type? In this case, only points. That's good. Uh, the horizontal position, probably if it were me, I'll have it like split into lats and long, then any GIS software can quickly rip from this. In this uh, you need to do some post-processing stuff, elevation, etc., etc. But that's the neat thing you can get from that file Excel in this format with the Euro Control.